Hey, and welcome to Property Mastermind Podcast with Hilary Saxon, episode 19. This week, we're talking creative strategies with the amazing Bob Anderson. So we'll be talking about how you could get into property development with little or no money of your own. This is going to be a very enlightening episode, so tune in. Hey and welcome to episode 19, as I said, Creative Strategies with the amazing Bob Anderson, sponsored this week by propertymastermind.com.au and we're giving away the the Secrets of Property Millionaires Exposed, of which Bob is one of the writers in this book. Many creative or many different property strategies in this book. If you'd like to win one, send me an email with something positive or some feedback or a question, hillary at propertymastermind.com.au. Hillary has one L, so if you've sent one and it bounced back, it's H-I-L-A-R-Y. And anyway, let's get started with uh, the podcast. Welcome, Bob. Thanks. Great to be back. <laughs> Great to be back. <laughs> Travel so far every time. Oh, I do. Oh, it's worth the trip. Oh, it's, it's worth those four metres. Oh, it is. I, I think it's more like about six. Well, we're moving the studio to, to a different mm. location. It's going to be about 12 metres. Oh, yeah. i start training for that one. <laughs> yeah. All the training. Bob. Bob used to be, a, in his day, was a bit of a runner. So I don't think that would be too much training for you. In his day. In his day. They're the words. Yeah. When was his day? What was your 10 seconds? Uh, oh, what's your 100 metre uh, uh, distance uh, speed, God. Bob? These days? No, back then. Oh, back at school. Uh, 10, I think it was about... It was 10.6, but th- that was on grass in those days. 10.6, <laughs> that's not bad. Yeah, oh, a long time ago. Now it would be 10.6, 10 minutes and 6 seconds. That would be my 100 <laughs> metre time these days. Uh, you'll, you'll need to get a new creative strategy around that. Mm, get fit. All right, so creative strategies. Yeah. Uh, with property development, with little or no money of your own is where we're heading. Yeah, creative strategies. It's, you hear it all the time. How to get into property development with little or no money of your own. Bob, uh, most of the people you used to teach who are teaching property now um, use that as well. Yeah, yeah. Oh, well, why not? It's there. It's there. I didn't invent it, but uh, <laughs> strangely enough. <laughs> you didn't. Inv- maybe the term. I was using that term oh, way back in the, in the early 90s even. You know. Weren't you teaching it at TAFE or something? No. Yeah. What were you teaching there? Well, no, I did. I did. I did. Not uh, that you're a school teacher. No. No, I used to run some property courses back in the dark ages, mm. you know, sort of probably around 1990, 1991. And uh, part of what I used to teach was so-called creative strategies, what I, what I talk about now. And, uh, yeah, so that's, gosh, that's a while ago. It is. Mm. And uh, since then, well, you know, everybody's jumped on the bandwagon and that's great because what it's done, it, it's opened up opportunities for people to get involved in, well, in our case, property developments, but even investments for that matter, mm. uh, who might not be able to otherwise. Yeah. So that's a good thing. Yeah. And, you know, if more people teach it, well, that's fine. And we both use them. You and I both right now. Oh, Together yeah. we're using them. Separately we're using them on projects. Mm. We're both involved creatively in other yeah, projects. So yeah. Creative strategies. Yeah, all sorts, on types. So, I mean, let's break this right down because not everybody listening to this podcast mm. uh, has, has had much to do with development. And I like to keep it so that people who are reasonably new to development can understand because there's so much terminology and so many women <laughs> acronyms in property development. Oh, so, Bob, yeah. in your words, what does what is a creative strategy? Yeah, okay. Look, it's really around finance. So what we're talking about creative strategies, we're not talking about structure of, you know, entities or, you know, what names you might buy in or what companies or trusts or anything else. We're not talking about that side of it. We're really just talking about how is something financed? Are there different ways or in some cases better ways of financing a project, if we're going to talk about property development, other than just fronting up at the bank and getting a bank loan? Mm. I mean, that's great if you can do it. Not everyone can. And that's mm. the whole point. Mm. Not everybody qualifies uh, t- to borrow nice cheap money from the bank. How cheap's money at the bank? Money at the bank at the moment. It's, it's pretty, free. It's pretty it's low It's near cheap. enough to free for me. Mm. That's what I say. Mm. You know, it's such a low interest rate. And uh, But not everybody qualifies. Not everybody has enough savings. Not everybody has enough serviceability to, to go and do a project. But the good thing is it's not game over because there are 
creative ways of doing it. And, and so it's all about the financing. Hmm. So my first two projects I ever did, my first two development projects were creative strategies. But you didn't know they were creative strategies. No, then. I got... I got I you got, were just a rookie little boy. I was a rookie little boy too, <laughs> yeah. but, but I didn't look on myself as a rookie little boy. I looked at myself as 10, 10 feet foot, tall oh, and bulletproof. Yeah. Not knowing that I was not, uh, actually only five foot eight, even though I felt like ten feet, <laughs> and I was certainly not bulletproof. Mm. I got shot a couple of times, but survived it. That's the important thing. Bled a bit, but survived. Uh, yeah, but they were my first two projects, and I got shown how to do them by other people. Uh, and these days, we show other people how to do them. Oh, you were very lucky, and that's probably a story for another day. You were yeah. me- mentored through way back in the day by somebody who decided to give somebody a hand and you've yeah. done the pay it forward thing. Which I is got great. the hand up. You did. Mm. So you used a few words in that description when I asked why you use a creative strategy. Mm. You use finance and structures and as soon as you start saying stuff like that, like we understand that, but for people new to property development, finance is often one of the big hurdles, yeah. especially at the start. And it's one of those things that needs to be sorted early. Um, and the other thing is... Yeah, structures. So when you do a creative strategy, it is about finance, how mm. you're going to come together with the money. And then the structure is like the leg- the legal way that it's sort of set up on paperwork for tax purposes and for legal purposes and that sort of thing. Yeah, Absolutely. Yeah. And, and you hit it. And they're not, um, how would I put it, you can't divorce one from the other. No. Uh, because depending on the type of creative strategy that you might use, that will dictate the type of Structure. When I when I talk about structure, keeping it simple, I'm talking about the ownership. So if we're talking about buying a property development site, we're basically talking about the ownership. You know, what is it going to be in our personal names? Mm. Uh, is it is it going to be in a company? Is it going to be in a trust? That you know, we've covered that elsewhere in, at other times. So yeah, that, we that's did what we mean of, by structure. A couple back, we did a yeah. Uh, yeah. If you're interested and you haven't listened, we did do a podcast on structures. So you're just understanding what a structure is. Yeah. Mm. And so, d- differing types of creative strategies regarding finance could impact on the, if you like, the the structure, the purchasing structure, the mm. the ownership structure. And, and you know they need to they need to be in alignment. Uh, so with that being the case, what you need to know ideally is what sort of strategy are you going to use? What sort of creative strategy are you going to use? And there's a, there's a range of those. You know, is it going to be a, a simple joint venture with somebody else? Are you going to borrow money? Just borrow money from somebody else because they they can uh, require different types of structures. So good to know up front. Which way are you going to go? There's varying reasons that people could use. And one, like it just could be personal choice that you might want to use a creative strategy. You might you might have enough money, but you might not want to use your own money. Um, you might want to do more than one project at once. So you don't want to spread yourself, you know, you don't want to knock yourself out on one project. So you could you could do more than one. Yeah. And even like I've done a creative strategy, uh, a couple, I've done a few, I'm involved in a few and I've done, I've even done them and both Bob and I have done them with our children. Um, mm. Yeah, both of us actually. Yeah. And it's a great way to give them a leg up into property. That could be another podcast one day is joint venturing with your, with your kids. Yeah, absolutely. Great way of setting them up. So, or well, getting them started. And, getting them started. And even teaching them about creative strategy so they understand yeah, it's been fun, hey, watching our kids sort of get more and more involved in, and in, in property and wanting to understand it. And then they go out with their friends and it's like they're preaching. <laughs> oh, I know, it's hilarious. In yeah. fact, did you notice last week on our uh, live Q&A we do on a Wednesday night, my son jumped on and I've, he's only ever been on once and then he started asking questions. It was quite funny. So. Yeah, yeah. And, and your daughter on the weekend? Catching up with... Oh, yeah, there she is, out. Talking about capital raising to people. Uh, oh, yes, yeah, yeah. That's, it's quite amusing, <laughs> watching them grow, well, watching them grow in property, well, and yours, mm. that they've all, they're have all they all in the uh, programs and they're all... Yeah, yeah. And they're actually the whole lot are into property, mm. except for the, your youngest one. Well, he's, Yet, but he's keen. He, he's keen. And, yeah. and he's, he's just looking for a creative strategy, he is, he's, lo- he's looking for a joint venture partner. Uh, yeah, Dad. He keeps looking at me. I <laughs> yeah. keep looking the other way. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So alongside working, you know, we've both been in them and both are in them. Bob, you explain some other ways why people and that you've worked with in the past and even we're working with right now who are using creative strategies, but you go. Tell us why. 
Why? Well, if we look at the finance side, because that's really what creative strategies are about, the idea is to fill what's missing. Now, what I mean by that is, let's just say when you're buying a site, it might just be a purchase, normal retail bank purchase. Mm -hmm. So what do you need? Well, you need a deposit and then you need serviceability. Now, if you've got enough of both and the bank likes you, that's another story. You're good to go. You're good to go, <laughs> at least at least to acquire the site. Uh, but not everybody has enough deposit, if you like, enough equity, and not everybody has enough serviceability. So, And not all banks like people. And not all banks like <laughs> you go. people. So, you know, it, it could be that you've got enough deposit or equity, mm -hmm. but no serviceability. It could be the other way. It could be nothing. You might not have either. But what you might have is knowledge. You might be good at finding projects. You might be good at doing a project, managing a project, mm. uh, but short on the money side. Well, that's okay. It's it's a matter of, if you like, getting what you don't have. Mm -hmm. If it's equity, if it's deposit, you need capital, you need cash, you need to get hold of that from somebody else. And then, you know, sh as I say, share the love, which is really like sharing the profit or yeah. paying an interest rate Split or whatever it, up, it is. however it is, yeah. Yeah, so the, the whole idea is to get what you don't have. But in doing that, you're helping somebody else. You're either paying interest to somebody who has money that they've lent you, you're either sharing profits with somebody who's come into the project with you, like a joint venture partner, uh, and so both parties are fulfilled. You know, as you're talking about that, it just springs to mind somebody I often refer to, and I never say her name, but she's definitely into creative strategies. Uh, she's one of our mentoring students right now, and she messaged me the other day, and we were just talking about she was looking for a new money partner for something else, and she goes, I don't mind sharing the love, and she's one of these people that has more than one project on the go, and for her, she's partnering in different ways with different people, like in, on, in numerous ways, and it's working for her, isn't it? I know exactly who you're talking about, and it is, and and she's involved in a number of projects now, and each one of them is different, and they're all hers. They're yeah, all yeah, yeah. her projects. Yeah, they're all her projects, but uh, yes. she she brings investment funds in, uh, either people. Uh, when I say people, you know, it could be a type of joint venture arrangement where they're in the project with her. It could be a loan partner mm. where somebody's simply lending money and getting an interest rate return. But she's very good at, at adapting and and structuring the deal. Mm. And uh, I think it's for her, it's about she wants the end result. And mm. I think that this would apply to everybody. If you want to get into property development you and maybe you found a site, you want the end result, you want the development. So how... Can you best make that happen? What piece of your jigsaw yeah. is missing? And plug that bit with your creative strategy partner, mm. whether that be via, you know, like you said, like a money partner or joint someone venture. a joint venture. And there's, like, you know, different ways that these are structured. And there's m multiple ways of doing it, isn't there, Bill? Yeah, yeah. I mean, we can simplify it, of course. But the point is that uh, the individual you're talking about, as you said, she's got the end goal in mind. And there's a couple of different ways of getting there. Mm. You know, there might be two or even three different strategies that could be employed to get to that end result. And she's quite flexible, mm. you know. Uh, and and the other thing that uh, that that particular person is really good at is she's interested in the well-being of of the investor. Mm. She she does it from a from a really good place. Yes. And I think that I think that's important. I've always tried to teach people when, when we're talking about, you know, using other people's money, OPMs, as, mm. as we call it, other people's money, is, is to do it from a good place. And what I mean by that is don't just say, give me, give me, give me your money. I want the money. Give me the money. Don't concentrate on that. Look on it uh, as an opportunity to certainly help yourself. That's important. But to help somebody else. Help somebody else I financially. With when I'm working like with the mentoring people that we work with, I that's a hurdle I have to get people over because people think that they're asking somebody else for money, but very often it, you're offering somebody an opportunity. Yeah. Like I see it as an opportunity myself when people have asked me if I you know if, if the timing's right, I'll be like, yeah, I'm definitely keen and and help you know being involved in an opportunity. And that's a really good point you make about, you know, doing things and coming from a good place because it always springs to mind other people that I know that, you know, that in our community, when they come from a good place, I see people go further. Mm. They go further on their journey because it's, 
I don't know. It's just, it's just it's it's a positive energy. Yep. It's and people like them, so you're you're more likely to get things happen. I mean, even what my deal over um, the NDIS project I'm doing, the person I'm partnering with is comes from such a good place. Mm. He is so about. It's all about what is you know what is good for uh, people with disabilities. The, yeah. It's a big thing for him. Yeah, it matters. Mm. And mm. yeah, it matters what we're what we're making. Yeah, yeah, and that's a great ethical type of development. Yeah, not that developments. I mean, you don't want to do unethical. I'm not sure what that is, but 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 it is a, like when I say an ethical development, you're creating housing, really good purpose design housing for people with disabilities who are going to absolutely love being there, love living there, and, and really. You know, in, increase their life changing. Oh, life changing for them, but increase their quality of life, and you're mm. you're an instrumental part of that. Mm. And that's what's great about you know that sort of thing. So we've we've, we've sort of slowly got digressed, but uh, you you were talking about, and I think we were talking about using other people's mm. money, and I think the word using is a bit off putting, and maybe yeah. that's why it has that. You know, what's the other way we could? It's probably we could we use partnering. How could we say that better? I use the word partnering. Or, yeah, or what, partnering. Because that's, that's what it is. Yeah, uh, and that there's different levels of partnership. Uh, just to maybe differentiate mm. and keeping it simple, let's say we're going to do a property development. We don't have enough capital and we need to get capital from another person. We'll call that other person an investor. We can do a joint venture and the way I describe that is the other person comes into the project with us. Now they might be on the title of, of the land that we buy They'll probably be on the loan where we borrow money from the bank to do it. And their reward is normally by way of a share of the profits, whatever is agreed to. The other type is what we often call a loan partner. So with this, the investor isn't part of the project. So they're not on the title. They're not on the loan. What they do is they lend money to the developer. So it's a loan. And the developer then uses that money for the same purpose, mm. to use it as equity, to borrow money from the bank to do the development. But the investor is outside of the project. They're not part of the project. And their reward is an interest rate return typically on their funds, not a profit share. So that's two types mm. of, of investor. And uh, that's what we were saying before. You know, there's, you can often have more than one type of strategy uh, to, to get there. And even one person could be using both of those strategies in the same deal. They might have somebody mm. who's a, a joint venture partner with them on the loan, but then they might also have a money partner who they're paying an interest rate to. Yeah, yeah, you can, that's like, right. There's more than one way to, um, to make that thing happen. Mm. No, that's perfectly right. And you see that sometimes mm. where you know, it might be, as you say, a joint venture partner, they buy the site together. Mm. When it comes to borrowing the rest of the money to do the building, uh, they collectively still might not have enough, but mm. that's okay, it's not game over. Mm. They then engage a money partner to tip in a bit of extra cash mm. to get that final piece of finance to do the building. And like we alluded to at the start, it doesn't necessarily mean that somebody doesn't have the money. Some people might be doing this because they want to use what they do have for another project and start that whole process again. Yeah, yeah. And look, we've seen it in our, in, particularly in our mentoring program where we work closely with people, people having multiple projects. Mm. You know, um, two, three, four, I've seen six projects, I've seen people do six projects at a time using, you know, if you like, investor funds. OPMs. Uh, OPMs. Other people's money. Yeah. And uh, and that, you know, done properly, done well, it, it's great for both both parties because it makes something happen. You see, if you, if you didn't do that or you didn't understand it, uh, it means you didn't do the project. And you didn't do the project, well, someone else is going to do it. But if you didn't do the project, you didn't make any money, but your investor didn't make any money. Mm. And that's that, you know, that, uh, that view that I like to have of you know, helping other people. Because quite often, the, the other person, the investor, doesn't know what we know. They don't know how to do a property development. Mm. Most of the time, they're really just looking for a, a good return on their money, let's mm. say. And, uh, and like putting it in the bank's no, no good return on your money. And so you're actually giving people an opportunity that they would never have otherwise because they don't want to be a developer. They don't want to learn how to be a developer. They might be quite busy doing other things. Mm. And now you're giving them an incredible opportunity. Oh, I'm going to – we didn't – we don't actually script this. We write a couple of notes and say, this is what we'd like to talk about today. I'm just going to jump on the dark side there, Bob. And we do – sorry, are you ready? Are you ready for this? We often – 
not often, but we do regularly get phone calls from people who have uh, jumped in with somebody else and they haven't done their own due diligence as and they haven't checked out the person and the project hasn't made money. And that does happen. So, yeah. Yeah, look, it can. Like, it's like anything. Uh, you know, there's a good side and a bad side. Yeah. So that's, it's, I'm glad you brought that up. Yeah. Even if it is the dark side. <laughs> I feel like Gar- Darth Vader. I feel like Darth Vader. Um, Darth or Garth Vader? Oh, Garth. Let's call him <laughs> Garth. We don't want to. It, it's probably copyright. I probably can't use Darth Vader. We'll call him Garth. Garth Vader. Yeah, anyway. Uh, no, look, that is true. And so there's two parts to that. Mm. You mentioned the, the other partner. Mm-hmm. And then you me- mentioned the project. And, and what can sometimes happen if we just look at the project? Sometimes inexperienced people, mm. uh, they do their numbers and they do them wrongly and it looks like a deal and it's not. Then they get an investor in who knows probably not Nothing. much more. Yeah. <laughs> and and, they, and they're into a deal that it, eventually it's not going to work. Mm. And that's not a happy situation for either of those two parties and that, and that can happen. So the problem there was you might have a developer with all good intentions mm. But the, it was the wrong deal. It was done. The feasibility was done badly. It was never a real deal, and and people can get into trouble like that as well. Uh, on the other side of the coin, the person, I think, if you're going to do a joint venture, you know, if you're going to be in a deal with somebody, it's a business. It's a business. When you go into business, what do you do? <laughs> you check out your business partner. Yeah, it is. You're in a business for perhaps you know. 15, 18 months, two years, depending on the size mm. of the project mm. and where it is. And and people, what I find is sometimes, particularly when people are starting out, they're so keen to do a deal that they just like grab somebody who has the missing ingredients, namely the money, without really looking at the relationship bit because you've got to live with these people for a couple of years. And not literally. No, not literally, <laughs> no. But, uh, you know, your, your goals may be different, your personalities may be different, uh, and, and you can see you can have a good deal, but then the relationship side of it falls apart. Mm. And, and you're stuck there, mm. you know, for a period of time, probably, you know, bickering and whatever else, who knows. Uh, and and, it, and that's not good either. So that's why the the structure is also important. Like who, what role people have. Mm. Because if you're a, a, basically a money partner, if you're loaning money for an interest rate, really that's it. You have nothing. That like you, it's none of your business, really. And they probably don't care because that's the type of bus, uh, investor they've chosen to be, where they just lend money, mm. and so they they don't have a relationship with the developer other than the fact that you know. One's a lender and one's a borrower. You don't have that day to day. Not involved in the decision making. You're not involved with that person, mm. and you're not even involved in the outcome of that project. No. Even if that project made no money, you still have you still get paid. Well, that would depend on your structure. Whether it, well, first mortgage, second mortgage. What that? That's another. Oh, whole, that's, another that's another whole project. <laughs> but you would. Yeah, depending yeah, on how keep, it's structured. Keep, keeping it simple. Keeping it how we start. The money partner, the one that just lends money. Yeah. The relationship isn't really the the issue. No, either. they just uh, invest money; they get paid interest. But joint venture, mm. uh, when you're on the loan, then you that would have to be set up in the structure as well. Whether you have, whether you yeah. are just sort of the silent partner, you know. Well, that's yeah. So you're right. So you have got the structure. That could be a partnership of trust. It could be a company where you both own shares. It could, you know, it could be a unit trust for you. There's all sorts of structures for for doing that joint venture when both both parties are in the deal. But you raise the question: there there should be a project management agreement mm. that goes with it, that spells out the roles and the rights and obligations of both parties, and mm. that is so critical to have a joint venture agreement and a good one. And, and that both parties understand that agreement. Mm. It should be the result of conversation, mm. agreement, and then the legal document. Mm. And uh, I've done plenty of joint ventures. Uh, How many would you have done, Bob? Oh, honestly, I don't know, but I, 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 had a, for I had a stab of the value of the joint ventures I've been involved in, and, mm. and it was somewhere between three and four hundred million. Uh, over over my life, pesos or dollars, <laughs> pesos, lira, rand. Lira. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Australian dollars will do. Uh, 
uh, you know, with little mums and dads up mm. to ASX listed companies and even governments. So, uh, but the, the the point is that you know, in the joint venture, the joint venture agreement is critical, mm. and that w- that's what spells it out. So, look, if you've discussed things with the joint venture partner, you've come to an agreement, and that agreement's now reflected in a document. Mm. It, it should be okay. And the only I'm not going to the only times that I know of that you know when we've people are, they ring sometimes people will ring Bob when it's too late because they look for someone who might be able to help them they ring up and then Bob's like oh okay well, this is this is a disaster <laughs> it's an unhappy conversation yeah sometimes. They, they they ring to just ask you know for advice they must just Google what do we do um, but mm. I think it's when people haven't taken their document to their lawyer and it hasn't been looked over, that's when there's always been a problem, hey? Mm. Yeah, look, occasionally when we do talk to people, uh, just randomly out of the, you know, from out there, they just find us (laughs) because we're out there, uh, I ask them, what sort of documentation do you have? And sometimes they have none. Mm. Actually, some people have lent money with no documentation. (laughs) I said, what sort of security do you have? Well, I don't know, what's that? Mm. Uh, Just because you like someone doesn't make make it a good deal. But anyway, we shouldn't. Let's come back over. Let's leave the let's dark go, side. Let's leave the dark side. And come back over to the yeah. good side. So the project management agreement spells it out. And look, yep. the, the, the joint ventures that I've been involved in, uh, because you get the right document and spend time getting the right document, understanding the other stakeholders, you know, what their requirements are, what ours are, is generally, well, in fact, I'd say in all, in all cases, my ability to develop is, being, is, is a higher ability than my partner. Mm. So the partner's more like somebody who owns land, somebody who has money, those sorts of things. So I'm going to manage the project. Mm. And and as a result... I'll let you manage my projects. Because <laughs> your ability <laughs> to develop is kind of like bigger than most people's. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and because of that, I will slant my joint venture agreement uh, in my favour in regards to making decisions. Yes. Because a lots of decisions have to be made during a property development and you can't have two people equally making a decision. Mm. I just, I couldn't do it and I wouldn't do it. Mm. That's where you have problems. You, you, I've seen people arguing about, you know... The, a tile t- colours. T- yeah, I know, I know you've told me. A tile. tile colours. It's gone on for weeks and weeks and, and they're building up all this animosity towards each other over stupid tile. Not to mention interest payments probably, <laughs> slowing down yeah. a project. So this is more like, this is going to happen in a joint venture. It's mm. not going to happen in the money part one where they just lend money because they're, they're totally out of that project, you know. I was just getting a return. Uh, but the, the, the problem can come, uh, if you, even if you have a, a, a joint venture agreement, somebody has to make the decision. Too many chiefs. Somebody has to be the project manager. Mm. And look, you can be communicative. Uh, like what I've done is, it, let's say I've um, spoken to the interior designer, we've chosen all the fixtures and fittings, you know, the, you know, the Bosch oven, the, the type of tile, the mm. carpet, whatever. And I'd say to the partner, okay, uh, it's all been decided. Now, this is what we're going to do. Here's a copy of it. So, so I'm communicating. I'm saying this is what's going into it. Mm. Uh, and they can say whether they like it or not, but it, it has no effect because mm. I make the decision mm. and, and that sort of thing. So, look, it's important to communicate with your joint venture partner, you know, regularly, but you've got to be very careful about giving them the ro- veto right. Mm. In other words, you can't. Yes. Don't. It's stupid. Don't do it. <laughs> That's my advice. <laughs> I think we've covered everything there, Bob. Is there anything else that you'd like to say? Well, yeah, we covered it with a broad brush. Yes. Yeah, within our, our property development uh, education, within the online course, for instance, or the bundle, we have a course within a course, as you know. Yes. It's a creative <laughs> strategies course where we teach a whole range of property development strategies like joint ventures, uh, capital raising, joint ventures with landowners, even things like syndicates that we, we touch on as well. So it's a course within a course. And it's not sold separately. It's all part of the property development course. So. Mm, yeah. It's like a subset of finance. It's just a different way, a creative way of financing development projects. So I think what you're saying there is if you're interested to know more, check us out, propertymastermind.com.au. That's the place to go. <laughs> While we're on that, we've actually got a free masterclass coming up on the 16th of October 
uh, Sydney time, is it 9.30 to 1.30? Yeah, we work off Sydney time. Yeah, so that's on the 16th of October, a half day. And it, it, does, it will have great content. Bob delivers. He'll go through the process. Some people come along because they just want to be invigorated and they've got nothing else to do. But if you're new to property development or want to understand uh, the way Bob teaches and the way... Yeah, well, I, I go through the, the, the different steps of doing a property development, development yeah. the nine different steps. And guess what? What? I cover some creative strategies in there too. You do. Actually, I remember now. So anyway, that's free. And obviously at the end, we'll talk about our workshop coming up, which is a full three-day online workshop this year on the 12th, 13th and 14th of November. Yep. Um, we're and, sort of and it doesn't matter about COVID. No. Because it's going to arrive in your living room. Uh, and we're setting up fantastic uh, workshop packages this yeah. year too. And we do have a early bird special. Yes, yep. there's currently an early bird special. So if you're interested in that, have a check us out, propertymastermind.com.au for our three-day online workshop if you've been thinking about getting into property development or if you'd like to know more about creative strategies. But also the free masterclass if you just want to check us out and, and see if it's uh, if we might see if be you able, like it. If we're a fit for you and the way um, Bob teaches. But I think that's it, Bob. I think you've done a great job there. Okay. explaining okay yeah all right well that's uh episode 19 creative strategies done and dusted oh 19 all right we're Ke off catch you next time bye see ya